In this short video, you're going to hear from Kenton. He has a question about moisture, condensation, and often mold that forms around supply registers or supply grills, vents, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I'm going to do my best to answer it. But first, here's Kenton. I would love to know why condensation forms around the registers. Uh, tried sealing them, uh, insulating them, and it seems like it's very hard to prevent. All right, so this topic of moisture around supply vents, supply registers, supply grills, those all mean slightly different things, but depending on what market you're in, sometimes people will call registers grills, whatever. It's the part where the air comes out, right? That's the important part. Um, why you get moisture forming around the edges uh, primarily, or sometimes you'll even get it on the, on the vent, the ceiling around it, that sort of thing. So Kenton already mentions that he seals around the registers. Let's first talk about the difference between issues that occur um, on the register, around that register, or on top of the register, because depending on where it's sourcing from, that can be different causes. So in some cases, you actually get moisture that builds up on the top, and that's because you have high dew point air in an attic, uh, some cases even in a crawl space, but we're especially going to focus on attic situations here. And so the conditions in that attic uh, can be very high dew point. And that just means high relative humidity, um, usually high temperature. A lot of people will incorrectly say that moisture forms where hot meets cold. Well, actually, it has a lot more to do with the moisture conditions of the air, meaning the relative humidity, the dew point, the total moisture content of that air, than it does the temperature. But hotter air does tend to be more humidity laden, more moisture laden than colder air. Cold air can only hold so much moisture. Uh, and that's that whole thing that I talk about a lot. You first have to understand some basics here, which is that hotter air can hold more moisture. Even that's not a scientifically correct statement, but for practical purposes, it's helpful for us to understand that. So while cold air is always dry air in the absolute sense, meaning the amount of absolute moisture it can hold, that isn't always true in terms of a relative humidity sense. Hot air is not always wet, but it can contain much more moisture. Obviously, if you're in the desert, you know that that air is quite dry. But that hot air in the desert could hold a lot of moisture because hotter air can hold more moisture than colder air. If that makes sense. The easiest metaphor I always use is think of a hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee. The warmer it is, the more sugar it can contain. And the cooler it is, the less sugar it can contain. So that relative humidity is relative to the temperature, all right? But that doesn't change the fact that what we really care about here in most cases is dew point, the point at which it hits 100% relative humidity and condensate forms. So that can easily happen on the attic side if it isn't properly sealed and insulated. So if you have air gaps around where the duct attaches to the boot, if you have poor insulation on the top side, that could result in that cold surface condensating, and then that could potentially actually leak down through around the boot and cause moisture on the underside. But that's really easy to see. If you go up top and you kind of pull the insulation away, is there condensation that's forming right there, or is there signs of kind of long-term staining? If that's not the case, then that's not the issue. And actually adding more insulation on top is going to only make that issue worse for reasons that we'll talk about here in a second. The reason why condensation forms in the first place is always due to the dew point of the air and the surface temperature of the surface. The colder the surface temperature of the surface, the more likely it's going to condensate, and the dew point of the air, which to me is always kind of the more important thing to try to solve for if you can. A lot of people kind of give up on attics because they're like, well, an attic is, it is what it is. It's hot, it's humid, there's nothing you can do about it. But people will often try to solve it in kind of a, 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 an unhelpful way. One of the most common ways that people try to solve issues with, an, with this problem in the attic, like I mentioned, is they pile more insulation over top of it. Well, what happens when you pile more insulation over top of it is that just further decreases the surface temperature of the vent on the underside. And if the issue is sourcing from the underside, that's only going to make it worse. So in a lot of cases, that's not helpful. The other thing that people try to do is they try to do things that increase the ventilation in the attic. When you increase the ventilation in the attic, you also generally are messing with the pressures between the attic and the occupied space. So things like doing powered vent fans uh, or creating more cross flow through the attic. That can reduce condensation in the attic, but often it actually creates a pressure imbalance driving more of that moist air into the space, which can then further increase the relative humidity and the total moisture content inside the house. Okay, So from a practical standpoint, you first got to figure out where the problem is. 
if the problem is the attic, then the best way to control attic conditions is to actually seal the attic. Use something like isonine, closed cell foam, open cell foam, uh, something that's going to completely seal it and then dehumidify the attic. That is the best way to solve those problems. A lot of people avoid that because it's expensive, time consuming, that kind of thing. But often for extreme problems, that's the only way to really deal with it when the issue is related to the moisture that exists in that attic. And blowing more air through it is just gonna bring more moisture into the attic in the first place because it's not just the heat that's the issue. It's the total moisture content of the air in the attic. Now, while you're at it, I want you to pay attention to a couple other things. Do you have dryer vents that are venting into the attic? That's a terrible idea, and we do see it sometimes. Do you have bath fans or kitchen exhausts that are vented into the attic space versus out? Those are sources of moisture in the attic. So pay attention to, are there actually silly things that are happening that are causing sources of moisture in the attic itself? Now let's go to the underside. You already mentioned sealing around the boots, but I don't want you to just seal around that boot. I want you to check in and make sure that it's hermetically sealed around all the boots, any cans around it, anything that communicates attic air to inside air, I want you to make sure you get that sealed up. And it's not just because of that hot meets cold right there. It's also the relative humidity of the whole space. If you start measuring total moisture content, you're gonna notice that dew points are higher near the ceiling. This is for a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons is that it is closer to the attic, it is closer to that space that is such high humidity, but also because water vapor actually rises. We know this because we can see clouds, right? We know that water vapor makes it up, and it makes it up because that water vapor molecule is actually lighter than air. Some of you will say that's not true. Uh, it is absolutely true. Liquid water is heavier than air but water vapor is lighter than air, so it will float up. You'll actually get higher total moisture content up near the roof peak, which is another reason why that tends to happen. Now, some people will try to solve this by running a ceiling fan, maybe adding a return at the peak. You can do some of those strategies and it can help, but it's usually not your very best bet. Generally speaking, your best bet is just to control the humidity in the space better and sealing all the kind of gaps and cracks from tops of wall plates and using sealed LED cans versus open can lights, sealing around uh, vents and boots. That's usually your best way to do that. But rather than only doing it in particular spots, look at doing it over the entire structure. Also things that can reduce indoor relative humidity, make sure the equipment is set up properly. Equipment that runs a long time and has a cold evaporator coil is the best way to control humidity in the space during peak load conditions. But the times that we generally find the worst cases of vent sweating are cases where either the occupant is doing things like leaving doors and windows open and letting a lot of moisture come in, or periods when it really isn't that hot. Maybe rainy seasons, maybe in the spring, maybe there's hurricanes that come through in Florida, we have hurricanes that drive a lot of moisture into the buildings, but it's also cool outside, so the equipment doesn't run as much. We want the equipment to run a lot, and we want it to run at a low evaporator temperature. Now, this is where people will start to argue with me, because they'll say, hey, you just said that surface temperatures being cold is what causes condensation, and if I run the air conditioner colder, meaning a lower evaporator temperature, a lower suction pressure, then that means that it's going to be colder at that vent. That is true. And so you could temporarily solve the problem just by increasing the, the blower speed. You're moving more air across the evaporator cool. You're moving more air out of the vent, and that will keep it from sweating. But the problem is, is that in the long run, that actually results in higher relative humidity in the space, higher dew point air inside the house, which then only causes the problem to show up once again. And now you're even worse off because now all of the objects in the house have absorbed more moisture. The best way to solve the problem is to control the humidity. Control the moisture in the space if the issue is in the space or in the attic if the issue is in the attic. Dehumidifiers are a great way to do that. So you can seal up an attic, throw a dehumidifier in the attic, just let it run. That's going to solve often both problems. It's going to solve the issue because it takes care of the primary moisture driver into the house, which often is an attic. Uh, but it also deals with things like duct sweating in the attic and other things that can kind of be a source of some of these problems. Sometimes you need to duct it into the air conditioner. If you are going to duct a dehumidifier into the air conditioner, we suggest ducting the supply of the humidifier into the supply of the AC ductwork. This both warms up the AC supply temperatures, reduces the dew point, and greatly reduces condensation. That's another kind of uh, super solution when you have these issues. Also keep in mind, Occupant behavior really makes a big difference with these issues. So if they're leaving doors and windows open for portions of the day because they like how it feels and then they're trying to cool it back down, that's going to be an issue. It's going to cause these problems. 
Running bath fans when they're not needed is going to tend to cause these problems. Consider using things like humidity sensing bath fans. Running kitchen exhausts when they're not needed is going to add to this problem. Running them when they are needed is important, but running them all the time just pulls more moisture into the house. And that's a really important thing. A lot of people think they're drying out the house when they're running bath fans and when they're running kitchen exhausts. You're only helping if you're doing it when you're taking a shower, taking a bath, or cooking food. Other than that, you're actually making it worse because you're pulling in outside air uh, whenever those are running. Things like making sure that the dryer is properly vented. It isn't leaking in the laundry room because when that moisture makes it into the house, it doesn't leave until the air conditioner or dehumidifier removes it. And often, where is it going to condense? At those vents because that's the cold spot, right? It's always going to be the cold spot. It needs to be the cold spot. So trying to warm up the vent itself generally isn't the best way to do it, unless you're doing something like a dehumidifier dumping that air into the supply duct, which helps warm it up and helps reduce the humidity. So wherever possible, try to solve these problems by keeping moisture out in the first place. That's where sealing can come in helpful, better ventilation strategies, better consumer education, sealing and insulating attics so you remove that driver, actually thinking about the moisture itself how to keep that moisture out, and then how to get it out once it's in. And then you can look at surface temperatures. But again, things in the attic where insulation can help, that makes sense. But if the issue's underneath, do we really want to increase the surface temperature of that vent? Not really, especially not by increasing the system airflow, which is going to result in a warmer evaporator coil and less dehumidification. I know I kind of talked in circles here, but we have a lot of really great articles on this in HVAC School. If you just look up humidity in HVAC School website or on our app, you're going to find more. And usually the best way to solve these problems is to provide a, a series of solutions rather than just looking for that one simple thing. Just sealing around the vent, unless it's really got a lot of gaps and cracks, generally isn't going to solve the problem. Think about it bigger. Provide bigger solutions. That way you're going to take care of it for your client the first time, and you're not going to be chasing this problem down the road. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex. Bytex.